The market's been falling for a few days straight now and with the age-old cryptocurrency saying that you hear across all of YouTube and Twitter, buy the dip, you're probably wondering, how the hell do I keep buying the dip? My money is running out. Where am I going to get this money from? So in today's video, I want to go through that with you and decide how you can best structure your portfolio if you were finding that you're running out of money and you need to buy some more of these dips. So welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, bell notification icon so you can see these videos pop up in your feed and it lets YouTube know that you want to see more of this content. If you haven't already, hit that like button when you click onto the videos. It's absolutely free and you can always unclick the button later. It just costs you a few seconds in time. All right, let's get on with this hopium free video today. No more money to buy the Bitcoin at crypto crash. Let's do this. Obviously, we've got a few bits of news to get through. We're going to look at the charts and then I'll get to those in the rest of the video. So we're going to look at can't decide what to sell, Bitcoin charts, we're going to compare some things and then to have patience. First up, if you haven't hit that free investor newsletter link down below, it's in the top of the video description. Absolutely free once every two weeks to learn about cryptocurrencies and investing it is jam-packed, it's full and it's free. So click on that down below and you also get updates for any of our Patreons or TIA Premium, the trading course, which goes on special. So we have one of those coming out uh, next month for Patreon. There is one available at the moment and for TIA Premium at the moment, use the code Buy the Dip for 10% off. Link is down below as well. First news, all right, over 60 South Korean crypto exchanges uh, set to suspend services next week. So this was from the 17th of September. So let's not forget about things that are going on in Asia. More than 60 cryptocurrency exchanges in South Korea must notify customers of a partial or full suspension of trading by Friday midnight, a week before a new regulations come into effect. So I'm just remembering this sort of news that's coming out. Maybe this is also uh, putting a little more fear into the markets as well. But I'm read a little further down. All Of all exchanges, nearly 40 are set to suspend all services. A further 28 have security certificates but have not secured bank partnerships. Just four, Upbit, Bithum, CoinOne and Corbit have registered and secured partnerships and will also be allowed to make one settlement, so South Korean currency settlements. And they're some of the biggest as well. So I think this will blow over and will possibly be all right for the markets considering some of the largest are going to be fine at the end of the day. There are a lot of exchanges over there and some will be suspended and some won't be able to uh, have an onboard or on ramp for Korean currency. But at the moment, it seems like the big news that is affecting the markets is Evergrande, like we talked about in yesterday's video, and also the stock market, the US stock markets are having a little bit of a spill. Over to the charts, Bitcoin. I'm on the weekly chart here. Let's just zoom out for one more chance of less hopium or hopium free and just look at where we currently sit. Here is our range that we have run up since June and July low. And now guess what? We're sitting on our 50% range. We topped out at our 61.8. We dropped and then we came back up and hit 61.8 of the major range. And now we're just sitting at 50% here. So everything is looking like it should. I like these opportunities to be buying crypto. And of course, there is the theory that maybe we top out here and we head back down to 10 or 14K. I think that's still less likely at the moment. Of course, it'd be lovely to see some big volume come in at these levels, but should we not get there? I like these times as buying opportunities rather than buying the peaks, just like we were talking back in April and May. The other thing I've got here is our triangle. This is a massive triangle here from 2017 through to 2020. Possibly. I'm just looking at this as maybe we're looking at some sort of setup like that for Bitcoin after we ran up so quick and so hard. So this would just be like a massive bull flag. That would be pretty cool to see happen in the markets. But the downside to a lot of new investors is you have to be patient. You have to wait out a fair chunk of this year and next year. And of course, I've, I've spoken about quarter four being quite a big bullish period for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So this would be a still a bullish theory, but it would just require more time to be waning around in these figures before we got a break and uh, you know retested those old all-time highs. So it's just something that I keep on the cards there. 
We've seen it before on Bitcoin where this went for a long period of sideways accumulation and then we got a massive, strong, huge breakout. So it's a bullish thing. It's great to see, but it requires patience. All right, so there's a couple of scenarios there. I'm still looking at both the bullish side. I don't have a, um, a, a full bearish scenario, which I'm running at the moment. The only bearish scenario I would see is if we broke down from 28K, breaking those support levels. And I, I can't see that happening just yet because we had such a huge, huge buying opportunity in May with some of the biggest volume that we've seen on uh, Binance for Bitcoin. So that's looking pretty good. Let's have a look at Cardano, ADA. Again, we got a little dip into the two, well, under $2. And now we're finding ourselves getting back to our 50% level of $2.03. So currently at 204 as I record this. Remember, we looked at each of these low levels as support and the market has pushed to them to test them. It held up by two cents. So this low yesterday was $1.89. And in August, it was $1.87. So it came within two cents of breaking this swing low. But it, like we've talked about, anywhere into that zone, whether we see the old supports that are around that 180, I still think that's pretty good. And then the, the worst case, last case scenario is that $1.50, $1.60 because we've got the major 50% level. We have uh, previous highs. And then if it was to get back into that zone, possibly some more churning in this area. But for now, it's looking all right. We, we do have volume back into the market. It's definitely something that I like to see. I always want to see some good volume coming back into the market and then seeing it, the market push from that volume. So from this point for ADA, I think it's we're going to have to push up eventually, get a relief rally and potentially break this downtrend, which will slow the bleed. That's what I'm looking for here. Right now, we have this same speed angle that we're just dropping, dropping, dropping. The, the market's found some volume. So it's found a bit of a low, intermediate low, and then... Ideally, I'd love to see it break this angle and then come back and start to reaccumulate in that 2 to 230, 220 level. That would be ideal for ADA, more buying opportunities there. Now onto ETH, you can see it's very similar again. Huge volume coming in these last two days. I think this is going to be a bounce, maybe a temporary bounce, maybe a longer term bounce. Either way, it's on my 50, it's on my 38. You might be thinking, why the hell is he bringing in a 38 now? Never brought that in before. Yes, we've talked about it a little bit, but I mainly focus on the 50% because the 50% works really well. But going back, look at this major 38%. Market has run the entire bull market, well, the current bull market, and sat on that 38 multiple times, eventually breaking above the 50, and then we just saw that last leg. So are we going to see that again? I mean, Ethereum likes to do that. We're seeing it. Maybe we get down to that 24, 25, 26 but right now, I'm not getting greedy at that sense. This is low for me. 26 was fantastic. 27 and 28, that's the areas that I've been buying and talking about it with the guys in Patreon as well. So even if we drop to 24, okay, big deal. Another 15% off, 20% off. No problems. As long as I don't have to keep buying all of these peaks, I'm going to be good in the long run. Solana is still on a downtrend. It is getting some volume coming in, so maybe there'll be a relief rally, but this has shot up so hard, and I still think there's probably a little more downside in this, although it was one of our stronger horses. It ran good. It gave us good profits. I got out, like I talked about on the channel, getting uh, this to be a risk-free trade now, so I'm just not emotionally attached to it. The nice thing here as well is we bounced off 50%, around that 115 to 120 bucks. Make sure you're following over on... Uh, Twitter as well, because I talked about this in detail. This has been a good trade, a good one to follow and understand what's going on to learn from the markets and how other people are potentially buying all of these dips when that's just not the strategy that I prefer to use. Remember, we're here because we're looking at how to get some more cash for the market if you are finding yourself buying all these dips and now you're running out of money. So, you need to be able to compare cryptocurrencies in your portfolio. Can't decide what to sell. Let's look at a Bitcoin chart. Let's let's compare some stuff here. So this is what we're going to look at for the example is, is one inch. One inch is a crypto that I hold. It is fortunately risk-free. It's something from 2021. When I say risk-free, it just means that I sold out some so that I, I don't hold my capital in here and it's just the market's money now. So whatever I sell it at, it's profit. Um you might not be in that position, which is uh, another scenario. But in any case, 
even if you're in a loss, maybe you want to sell out of something which looks weak and put it into something that is strong. I've definitely had to do that in the past as well and I'll continue to do that in the future. So one inch is the, the weaker looking crypto here for me. And why is that? Well, I'm looking at the Bitcoin chart and it is coming back to some support, which is good. But if it starts to break this support, I would say that it probably has a little further to go, maybe a lot further. And so you can see, like what uh, like we talked about with Cardano, it kept hitting this $2.30 and eventually it broke the floor and came down. One inch, it's trying to do that as well. It's hitting the floor at the level of around 6,000 or 5,800 Satoshis. It's hit it again. It's hit it again on the, the 7th and now it's hitting it again. So if we start to break down from that, that's my weak cryptocurrency. And I would say, well... I'm probably best to get out of this. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is for sure. It could screw us and just bounce down and then take off from here. But the way I have learned from the past is that generally when these break down, they're probably going to be down for a little bit, especially when they're under their 50%, especially when they're coming back to some old lows. Things can go lower than we expect them to. And so at that point, I would be looking at uh, well, this is my Bitcoin chart and then I'm comparing it to something else that I want to purchase. And Adam is one of those ones that I've talked about on Twitter. Like I said, links are down below for Twitter. This is in a stronger position. And look at this on the Bitcoin chart as well. So we, we know Bitcoin dropped on the 7th of September. All right. This was the week. This was a couple of weeks ago now. So that's that's the 7th there. That's the week that the big drop happened. This is the 7th for Adam. And during that period, while Bitcoin was trying to figure out what it was doing by going down, Atom was going up against Bitcoin. This is the seventh here. This is where we just were at the 20th on the first drop. So it was going up. To me, that is strong. On one inch, there is the seventh. And it's been going down this whole period. Even before the seventh happened, it's been going down. So Atom to me is stronger. Does this mean that it's going to hold up? Of course, we're talking about here is no guarantees. But if I'm just looking at some probabilities, I would be looking to uh, position myself into something that's holding up in these fearful times. Now, I take a look at the USD chart. It's come back to hit and hopefully sit on some old all-time highs. That's still a good sign. 50% back at $26. This is in a stronger position than one inch. Even though one inch is lower, it is, uh, you know, it, it has higher to go. It could take off further. It has bigger multiples to get back to its all-time high. This is the sort of narrative that is run across all of YouTube for when people miss out on certain cryptos. And the, the most recent one I was hearing was like uh, DeFi and DOT, right? So I still think DOT is in a good position now, but it was one of those cryptos where it just was pushed everywhere and it didn't take off. You might have thought it took off in your own portfolio, but you missed out on the stronger stuff. And that is what I want to avoid. I want to avoid holding into something just because it's low, expecting the best from it and getting on to something that is riding hard and strong and getting in early as I see it start to break out and then continue to be strong. This could all just turn to crap if Bitcoin continues to dump. That's what happens with the market. So the way I was trying to uh, save myself here in my own portfolio is just look at what's strong during the period that Bitcoin was weak. All right, so this has been re relatively strong and uh, one inch wasn't so. So that's something that I would look at in my portfolio. So the idea here is to go back and assess your portfolio. Can't decide what to sell because everyone's been buying all of these dips and your money spread across so many different cryptocurrencies. Go back and assess the Bitcoin charts of the cryptos you hold. Go back and assess the USD charts of the cryptos that you hold and just look at what position it is in relative to the overall market and the crypto that you want to purchase. That's the way I would be looking at it. That's the way I do look at it. And that's the way I uh, discuss it with um, TIA, the Investor Accelerator Patreon group and the Investor Accelerator Premium group as well, which is about the crypto trading course, which you can find a link to down below. If you're not ready for that, check out the free newsletter. There'll be a lot of details on that as well. It comes out once every two weeks. You can find a link to that absolutely free. Sign up. You want to unsubscribe later. Easy, easiest thing to do. I will wrap it up there. That's my video for today. I hope you guys found some value from that. No more money to buy Bitcoin in this crash. 
this is one strategy to do if all your money is tied up in the markets and you just want to be able to get into something else, which you believe from your research is going to perform better than something else. One last thing I'll leave on here is if you can clean up your portfolios, especially when the market is down, it's not a bad thing at all. If you can clean up your portfolios, it frees your mind to be able to research other projects later. The hardest thing to have is dozens of different projects that you've got little bits of money in in each of them because your mind's across so many different things. So if you can cleanse what's going on for you, just like the market is cleansing right now, it's cleansing the weekends, it's cleansing the people that have been over leveraged. If you can do that to your portfolios, the next stage of the market is going to be much easier for you as well. Thanks once again, guys. If you haven't already, stake your ADA with the Investor Accelerator pool down below. Check it out. Links are down there. Full instructional videos are down there as well. I'll see you on Twitter, on Instagram, or in the Investor Accelerator across Patreon or, or Premium. All the links are down below. Like the video up and subscribe if you haven't already. It lets YouTube know that you want to see more of this content. I'll catch you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.